Have you ever wondered why dancers practice in front of a mirror? Have you ever wondered why star athletes record themselves and their opponents to analyze the details? If so, you'll have come to the realization that our felt experience is not enough to guide us and navigate the world, that we need something from the outside to help guide us, to check us as a, as a force. Now, this can be very devastating to our sense of self, our sense of ego, because the moment we realize that that outside force truly affects us is the moment that we recognize that our interests, what sparks our imagination, what catches our attention, what raises our passions and desires isn't purely from us. I give the example of authenticity as a virtue. I say that being authentic with one person isn't the same authenticity as it is with another person. And I don't just mean the details of the relationship or the shared experiences. I mean the actual quality of those relationships. I bounce differently with different people. People draw out a quieter side, a more pensive side, a more uh, competitive side. These different aspects, the quality is different. So that felt experience cannot be our guiding star. And that is not a revelation. You know this, I know this, historically we've all known it. And yet in today's world, we resist it because a brief skimming of history will show us that allowing the outside world to help us write our story, allowing the outside world to have an influence over our wants and desires can lead to tyranny. And that's terrifying. Of course it is. But when we look at all the possibilities in the world and we check and see like what's important and we try to, I want to prioritize this over this, if what you're measuring those against is purely your own self-interest and wants and desires, then that's a different issue. We resist this in today's world. And the reason this is coming up for me today is because I was in a Dialogos practice, of course, and we were talking about courage, what it means to be courageous. And it struck me that we were chasing this infinite game. We were chasing this obstacle that can't be surmounted because uh, to try and define the virtues is by essence difficult. I use the example of authenticity again here and say like, you know, knowing yourself is a walled garden and truly tapping into who you really are. That's a good definition. And then someone else says that, yeah, but if you don't show it to the world, then you're not really being authentic. Authentic is like a being mode that you have to presence that deep knowledge into the world. It's like, that's a good definition too. And then you go to the third and you say, me being authentic with different people has a different quality to it. And therefore they're helping me write it. So not only am I showing it, but they're actually bringing it out. And that's a good definition as well. And then you circle back around. Does the first definition seem any less relevant now? Walls garden, really knowing who you are. That still seems so true. So, this is, that's just my favorite example from the Dialogos practice of this tension between definitions. It is an endless game. It is, and somehow by getting to that space, you realize it's somewhere there. I can try and put words to it, but I can really feel it. That's the kind of felt experience. And what I got last week was on courage, was this ability to deconstruct. To like, you know, some obstacle, some challenge. To be courageous is to break that down into challenges that I could maybe do. And just trusting that along the process, I will continue to be able to break it down. And then it struck me. That how absurd that kind of was. I was doing a practice where we're playing an infinite game where there is no end to it where I don't have the answer and they don't have the answer. And yet I'm committing, I'm performing my 
I'm moving in that direction. It, it's worthwhile me sharing my false or like, you know, not wholly true aspect of what courage is to me and knowing that I don't have it and then listening to someone else who I know also doesn't have it and he's doing the same process of knowing that he doesn't have it and then you get to this stage where you're just, how absurd is that? I'm listening to my true self. I know it doesn't have all the answers. I'm listening to the outside world. I know it doesn't have all the answers and somewhere there I'm trying to hold a center. I'm trying to hold a middle ground, a sense of peace, a sense of um, something to listen to, something that is in relation, in proper relation to what's coming in and what's going out. And that gave me just a new appreciation for this cosmological dance of like, you know, authenticity versus humility. I've, I've, I've gone on that one before, but this one, I suppose, is just to emphasize the fact that that process is absurd because the authenticity, you need to listen to it, but it's wrong. <laughs> and yet you need to perform it. And then the humility is also wrong. And yet you need to listen. And somehow, somehow, when they dance, you kind of stumble your way forward, you kind of dance along with, hopefully you're developing also a wisdom to kind of, to really kind of pivot with these different shifts in beat, in rhythm, to kind of continue the analogy. Um, and that that is our guiding force through life. And that seems some bit hilarious. So that is what I wanted to share with you this week is just the, the hilarious absurdity of, of knowing this, knowing that duality, knowing that tension, knowing the value of holding that tension, and the absurdity of actually performing in it, actually living that in the real world. Um, so that's today's topic. That is a plug for the Dialogos practice, kind of, uh, an insight into these insights that do kind of come in and the fact that it's stuff you already know. So it's nothing too scary. It's not big philosophy sort of stuff. It's not like, you know, oh, Descartes said, and like, you know, we're going into Locke and we're going into Nietzsche and we're going into like, it's, it's if that helps guide you in the process, great. Um, but the insights that come in are always things that you're just like, yeah, I knew that, but, but by getting to that space where the words, as I said, for authenticity, where the words can't go any further and yet you're committing to still kind of digging in and trying to find that space in between, uh, you get like a really felt sense of what a virtue is, of what the virtue is to you in this moment, how it's presenting to you, and it stops being this debate and starts being this perspective, this procedure, this way of participating in the world, to use the four Ps from John Verveke. So that is enough of a plug, that is enough of a rant. Thank you so much for your time and attention. I hope you've had a great week. I hope you are looking forward to the week to come, and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys. <laughs>